these are the notes for 4.1 and intermediate algebra um, so since before spring break um, I'm going to talk about how he would solve these things um, we're going to start chapter 4 uh, we're going to start looking at properties of exponents we're going to take a break from linear uh, terms that we were looking at before uh, spring break and we're going to start looking at how we simplify things um, in a more sophisticated case so we have properties of exponents um, so before we actually start looking at what we need to do with an exponent well we got to see what an exponent actually is and um, <clears throat> You're, you know you're pretty basic you know so the definition of an exponent so this is pretty basic um, so for this definition right here so we have for any counting number n so n could be um, in this case n could be you know 0 1 2 and it could also be um, n could be a fraction as well but for the time being we're only we're primarily dealing with um, integer values and integers are just um, counting numbers like 0, 1, 2 and so on and it could include negative numbers and we'll see what we're talking about a little bit later um, but this just basically means that I could represent a number to a power so we treat this number B as we call that the base of an exponent and we call the number n here that's the well that's the that's the exponent of the base as we can see right there so um, whenever we're doing these things it's very important to know what is the base and what is the exponent so for example and this is written here and I'll write it out again so for example 3 to the 6th power is just 3 multiplied six times and if you do that on your calculator so 3 times 3 times 3 times 3 times 3 times 3 gives you 729 um, so now if you do that in your calculator which is certainly fine you could also do it in your calculator by um, looking at there's a power button so if you go to if um, you look at this button here on your calculator it's this button it's the carrot button you could type in any number so I'm gonna type in 3 and you hit the carrot and type in so how many threes did I have there I had six of them so 3 to the 6th power get out of the exponent Pardon me, I'm trying to adjust my light here. Um, so if I do that, then I hit enter, I get 729. So either way in your calculator, you could do that. It's not a problem. So you get 729. Um, you know, one thing you need to be aware of is that when you're doing exponents, um, you have to know it you have to be aware of what the base is and that's what I'm talking about in this statement right here so you have to know what the base is so let's look at this case so here you know I have it written here but here I have 2 to the fourth power well I have a negative 2 to the fourth power but here as well I also have a negative 2 to the fourth power but what's the difference what's the difference between these two well if we look at this one the base here is just the two okay so that means I have four twos I have two times two times two times two but the negative sign is sitting out front of that result so the negative sign sits out front of it the negative sign here sits out front of this whole product so if you do 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 you'll get 8 but because I have a negative sign out there out front it's negative 8 
Now here, in this case, if you do a little ob observation here, I have negative 2 to the fourth power. So the base here isn't just 2, it's negative 2 because of the parentheses. So if I write this out, this means I have negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2. And if you do that product, well, 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 is still 8, but I have an even number of negative signs. And as you know, an even number of pro an even product gives me a positive result. So my answer isn't just 8, it's positive 8. So I just want you to see the difference between these two. You have to clearly define you have to clearly define what your base is. All right. So if I keep going here, um, the main thing you're going to be looking at in this section is looking how to simplify expressions with exponents, and that's what we're going to do here. Is um, You're going to, when we simplify these things, you're going to want to simplify things, and they, they cannot contain no any parentheses whatsoever. All these, um, all common bases must be converted into one base, and you'll see what I mean when we look at the properties. Um, you want to reduce all fractions completely. So, for example, if I have six eighths, well, you could reduce that. There's a two in common here. So you could write this as, so 2 goes into 6 3 times, 2 goes into 8 4 times. Basically, this just means reduce fractions as completely as you can. And no negative exponents. Um, you'll see what I mean when we actually start looking at some of the properties, but that's the basic idea when it comes to simplifying expressions with exponents. And you have to do these four things. And, you know... Some of these are pretty straightforward enough. You've seen them already, so they shouldn't be uh, too bad to do. So if I go to the next page on the other side here. So if I look at these, well, here's the properties themselves. And like again, like I said earlier, some of these are pretty po um, familiar to you. So if you multiply two bases that are the same, you add their exponents. If you divide two common bases, you subtract their exponents. So for example, if I have x to the second times x to the third, well, that's going to be x to the 2 plus 3 power, which is x to the fifth power. When I multiply the same bases, these are both the same base of x. I'm adding their exponents, which is 5. If I had x cubed over x, well, I could combine these common bases into one base of x. To what power? Well, I subtract them if they're the same base. So this is going to be 3 minus, what's the power here? You don't see it, but it's 1. 3 minus 1 is, well, that's 2. So x cubed we call this x cubed, or x to the third power, all over x is x squared. And, you know, some of these other properties is if I have um, if I have two different bases raised to the power, I could break that power up to the product of these bases. Same thing for uh, a division, a fraction. Now, um, so basically, if I have a product raised to a power, I could break up the powers to the factors. If I have a quotient to a power, I could break the power up to the numerator and denominator. However, you cannot, so these are pretty straightforward, these two are pretty straightforward, but you cannot, you cannot break up a sum or a difference of powers. You cannot do that. So let me write that over here. You cannot You cannot do these. So if I look here, just for reference, this is a product raised to a power. Here's a sum, a plus b to the power n. I cannot do that. 
That's a no, no. No, you cannot do that. This is not true. This is not true. You cannot break up a power if I have a sum of two bases. And it's the same thing for if I had a difference here. If this was a subtraction symbol, you cannot do that if it's a subtraction either. Only multiplication and division can be broken up with powers, not addition and subtraction. That's very important. Um, so let's look at a few examples here. <clears throat> Simplify the following expressions, writing the results in terms of positive exponents. So for this first case, okay, um, so I have, let me just rewrite this because it looks a little blurry. I have x squared y cubed to the fourth power. Um, again, you have the notes. I will be sending the notes to you. Um, but, all right, so how do we do this? Well, again, I do not want, if I look for my notes on the previous page, I want to combine, one of my four things to do is I want to combine all common terms into one base. Um, and if I look inside here, right, I have two bases. I have these two bases are being raised to a power. All right. So I want to rewrite each of these bases, X and Y, as a single power. If I look at this property right here, I have a base of a power raised to another power. So in this case right here, this last one right here, a power raised to a power is the product of the powers. So, for example, for this one, if I had x squared to the fourth power, what power is that going to? What power is x going to be raised to? It's going to be raised to the product of two and four, which is eight. Okay. So, what I'm going to do in this first one is I'm going to break up, since this is a product in here, I'm going to break up the fourth power to the x squared and the y cubed. So when I do that, I'm going to have x squared to the fourth power times y cubed to the fourth power. And I could do that because that's this property right here. This is a product in here. B and C are being multiplied. Sorry about that, but B and C are being multiplied. So... <clears throat> Because of that, I could break this one up because the y cubed and x squared are being multiplied as well. All right, so now when I come here, well, now each x and y, now they're, this is x squared to the fourth. So this is a power raised to a power. That's this property right here. A power raised to a power, you take the product of the powers. So this base of x becomes x to what power? 2 times 4, which is x to the eighth. And this y becomes what? y cubed to the fourth is y to the twelfth power. Since these powers of x and y, or I'm sorry, these bases of x and y are raised, they're the only base of each type of variable, I'm done. That's it. That's the answer. And number two, this is very similar to number one, in that... When I want to do this, well, everything inside the parentheses is being raised to the seventh power. Okay? So, since everything here is being raised to the seventh power, that means the negative two, the x to the fifth, and the y are all being raised to the seventh power. And since this is a product of everything in here, the negative two times x to the fifth times y, I could break it up. So I'm going to write that out. So just write that out. Negative 2 to the to the seventh power times x to the fifth to the seventh power times y. Now that's y to the first, even though you don't see the power of 1, it's there. But y to the first to the seventh power is just y to the seventh power, because 1 times 7 is obviously 7. So now, from here, it's very similar to this one. 
take so all these numbers if you have a, if you have a, a numerical base like in this case we do this is negative 2 to the seventh you want to write that out you want to reduce all numbers at fractions completely so reduce all numbers so I'm gonna write I'm gonna write negative 2 to the seventh I'm gonna write that as the number that it is that's gonna be negative 2 to the seventh power so if you take out your calculator you could just do that in your calculator so now be careful here this is what base is this here is this 2 to the seventh or is this negative 2 to the seventh it's negative 2 to the seventh so when I type this in my calculator I'm not just gonna write 2 to the seventh there we go there's a glare here I don't know why so I'm gonna write parenthesis now I'm gonna use negative sign not minus sign negative 2 close parenthesis here's the caret button to the seventh power negative 128 okay so negative 2 to the seventh power becomes negative 128 and that's going to be times the result of this. Now, what's x to the fifth to the seventh? How do we write this as just x to a power, a single power? What property are we using? We're using this one. It's a power raised to a power. So that's going to be the product of the powers. Seven times or five times seven or seven times five is x to the thirty-fifth power. And y to the seventh, well, that's already y to the seventh. So again, this is right, but we don't usually emphasize the product notation here. We just write it out as one term, as negative 128x to the 35th, y to the seventh. That's it. Um, so this one, number three, Again, this isn't much different. Um, <clears throat> when we do this one, so since this is a division, right, we could use the property up here, right, the fifth one, or the fourth property, I mean, I'm sorry. We could break up this power to the numerator and denominator. So I could write this as 2x squared now the 2x squared is in the numerator so everything here is being raised to the fourth power all over everything down here raised to the fourth power okay now you got to keep going with this until I just have one base of each type and I just have a single power in the exponent I just have a single power so everything here, 2x squared to the 4th, this is a product, so I could break this up with the 4. And write this as 2 to the 4th times x squared to the 4th. All over. Same thing down here. Well, well, I just have one variable here. This is y to the 6th to the 4th. So that's a power to a power. So what do we do to a power to power? Multiply them. 6 times 4, 24. Now we just got to simplify the numerator. So again, write out numbers, numerical bases, and numerical powers as a single number. 2 to the 4th, let's use our calculator. But you probably don't need your calculator for this because that's just 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, which is 16. So that's going to be in the numerator of the fraction. And again, this is a power raised to a power, so we could write that as x to the 8th power all over y to the 24th. We are done here because this is a base of x. This is a base of y. These do not cancel. They're different bases. If these were the same bases, then we could apply this property right here. But that's if they're a common base. But these are not common bases. These are not common bases. So I'm going to box that because it's done. All right. Um, so let's go on to the next page of the notes.
So <clears throat> there is one more property that we should look at in 4.1, and that is um, looking at how do we deal with negative exponents. And well, it's basically this is the idea right here. Negative exponents translate to reciprocals, and um, <clears throat> so the idea behind this is that if you have a negative, if you have a base and it's raised to a negative number, then to make it positive, I just, well, I reciprocate it. I just take this number, I just flip it, and the power becomes positive. And it doesn't matter if, so this note right here, it doesn't matter if this is in the numerator or the denominator, you're just gonna reciprocate it to make the exponent positive. So for example, if I had three to the negative third power, how do I make this three to the third power? I flip it. Since this is over one, any number is over one, I could flip it. And it becomes one over three to the third power, which is one over, well, three to the third power is three times three times three, which is 27. And that's for this one, but let's say I had something that looked like this. If I had 1 over 5 to the negative second power, this is a 5. That looks like an S, but it's a 5. Um, since, this is, since this negative exponent is in the... Um, uh, let me rephrase that. Since this negative exponent of this base is in the denominator of the whole thing, to make it positive, I'm going to flip it. It's in the denominator, so make it positive, put it in the numerator. So if I put this up here, this will now be 5 to the positive 2 power over 1, which is just 5 times 5, which is 25. So again, it doesn't matter if this is in the numerator or denominator. If you have a negative power, flip it, bring it up top, bring it down on the bottom to make it positive. That's it. Let's look at one here. Um, okay, so if I want to do this, here's what we're going to do. I want to simplify and write this result using positive exponents. Okay, so everything here is being raised to the negative second power everything here. So because this is a product raised to the negative second power, I could use that property number three. Product to the power, break it up. So do that. So when you do that, you're going to have two to the negative second power times x cubed, and that is raised to the negative second power times y to the negative fifth and that is raised to the negative second power. I could break that negative two power up to each one of these three terms which is what I did here. Now I just gotta simplify each term. Remember I want to write numerical bases with numerical powers as a single number. Okay well <clears throat> as you can see this power is negative. How do we take care of that? I want to use just I just want to make positive exponents, right? How do I make this positive? Well, it's because this is over one, to put this to make this positive, I'm gonna put the whole thing down here and it'll become two squared instead of two to the negative two power. Let me get rid of that. Let me move it down here a bit. So when I rewrite this, I'm gonna have here's my fraction bar. So I'm going to bring this guy down. I'm going to reciprocate. I'm going to bring him down. Right? I'm going to bring him down like this. So now I'll have 2 to the second power. Obviously that's 4, but I'll worry about that later. Let's look at this one. So this is x cubed to the negative second power. What's a power to a power? The product. So what's 3 times negative 2? Well, that's going to be x to the negative 6 power. What about y? This is y to the negative fifth to the negative second. What's negative five times negative two? Positive 10. 
that's what I have now. Am I done? No, I'm not done. This has a negative exponent. This is 2 squared. So, well, like I said earlier, 2 squared is that just 4? Okay. Y to the tenth, there's nothing wrong with that. It's a positive exponent, so I'm going to write it out as Y to the tenth. What's X to the negative sixth power? How do I make that positive? I'm going to flip it. I'm going to reciprocate it. Since it's in the numerator, I'm going to put it in the denominator with the 2 squared, or with the 4. So when this is all said and done, this will be down here with the 4. And it'll be X to the positive sixth power. And then that's it. That's it. You have one variable. You have one variable. You have a common base. All your numbers are written as num. All your powers are written as numbers, and that's it. That's it. Um, <clears throat> so in this case right here, let's look at one more. This isn't like a rule per se, but it's a um, it's a particular case. Um, so here is if I have a base raised to the zero power, it's one. It's just one. That's it. The only number where this isn't true is zero. So for example, zero to the zero power is not one. If you do it in your calculator, right? If you use your calculator, zero, caret, zero, enter, you get an error message. Let me clear out of that. So, but any other number besides zero, if you have a number raised to a zero, it's going to be one, except for zero. So, if I had 10 to the zero power, 10 carat zero, one. 100,000 to the zero power, one. If I had 10 pi to the zero power, well, that's 10 because I have a, maybe I should have written that a little differently. Hold on. Let me put, see now, what I did there is I didn't emphasize my base. That's the mistake I made. So if I put parentheses around 10 pi, and I raise that to the zero power, it's 1. So in, when I did that earlier, I did this, right? I, did, I just put 10 pi. When I did that, I got 10 because if you notice here, pi to the zero power, well, we already know that's 1. Any number to the zero power is 1. What's 1 times 10? It's 10. But here, everything is the base. That's what the parentheses mean. So that means it's 1. That's why you have to clearly define your base. The parentheses do that. So in these examples here, um, these are a summary of all the uh, bases uh, properties of exponents we've seen. In this case right here, the base of the numerator, so everything that's raised to the fifth power is everything inside the parentheses. Down here, everything that's inside the parentheses is raised to the fourth power. And since these are products, I could break them up. I could use the breakup rules. So let's do that. So this is going to be x to the negative second to the fifth. times y cubed to the fifth. All over x squared to the fourth times y negative three to the fourth. Okay, now from here, well, each one of these is a power to a power. What do you do there? Multiply the powers. So this is x to the negative tenth power times y to the fifteenth power, x to the eighth power times y to the negative twelfth power. I'm not done yet. Why am I not done? I don't have a common base. I have two x's. I have two y's. I have to combine them into a common base. How do I do that? Well, there are, you know, 
you could do this in any order you want. Like someone might look at this and say, hey, I have negative powers. What if I brought the negative power down here and then brought this negative power up here? You could do that. And then you could combine the bases after that. Or you could combine the bases now and then worry about negative exponents later. Either way is fine. Just as long as you follow the properties of exponents. What I mean by that is you don't do stuff like this. You don't break up a sum or difference. Don't do that. But as long as what you have here is a, as long as you see one of these cases and this case, as long as you see them show up in your problem and you follow them, you could basically you could follow them in in uh, any order you want, but it's usually best to follow them. It's usually best to start on the inside and work your way out, from my experience. Uh, but once you get here, either way you go in any order doesn't matter. So I'm gonna what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna combine these bases. So this is x to the negative tenth over x to the eighth. So how do I write that? That's going to be x to what power? Well, <clears throat> if I have two bases, so if I look at my properties, right? Let me get my properties over here again. I have a base to a power divided by a base to a power. What do I do? That's the difference of the powers. You subtract the exponents, right? So it's going to be that base to the difference of those two powers. Now, in this particular example, you have to be careful because one of these powers is negative. So what I'm doing is, since I have a base, I have a power, a base to x, uh, blah, I have a base of x to the negative tenth power, and divided by a base of x to the eighth power. So that's going to be a base of x to the negative tenth power minus the eighth power. All right. And that's going to be multiplied by com the common base of the y's. So again, a base to a power divided by the same base to another power. That's going to be the difference of the powers. So it's going to be the common base, which is y, to the 15th minus, because of the property, negative 12 because of the power. So be careful here. I have a lot of negatives showing up. It's very important that you keep track of your negative signs. So now, when I go through this, I could combine, I could just, you know, do these subtractions here. So this is going to be x to what power? Well, it's negative 10 minus 8. So negative 10 minus, oops, sorry, minus 8 negative 18 and 15 minus now I have a negative 12 so I'm going to put parentheses around the negative 12 27 so that's going to be y to the 27th power now I have one more thing to do what is it I can't have negative exponents right when you simplify these things completely negatives must be made positive. So if I have a negative power, how do I make it positive? You flip it and you reciprocate it. This is over 1, right? This whole product is over 1, so I'm going to bring this guy down here to make it positive. So when I'm all said and done, the y to the 27th remains up top, and the x to the 18th comes down here. I flip them down here to make them positive. They have common bases. There's no fractions to simplify, so that's it. This last example in this section is not much different. We'll go through it. Again, this is a uh, these are products squared, so I could break them up. So I could write this as three squared times b squared times c to the fifth squared. All over, 
this is a product here as well to the third so I could break them up 2 to the third times b to the negative 2 to the third times c squared to the third now that I've taken care of that now I want to see if I can simplify each one of these terms one by one okay so 3 squared, what's that? What's 3 times 3? 9. You don't need a calculator for that. B squared, nothing wrong with that. Let me just write it there. What's C to the 5th to the 2nd? A power to a power, I multiply. So that's C to the 10th. All over. 2 third, or I'm sorry, yeah, 2 to the 3rd power. 2 times 2 times 2 is what? 2 times 2 is 4. 4 times 2 is 8. b to the negative second to the third. That's going to be b to the product of these two. That's going to be b to the negative sixth. c squared to the third. That's going to, that, that will not be c to the fifth. Don't add these. This is a power to a power. Multiply them. The only time you add exponents is when you're multiplying the same bases together. This is a power to a power. This is c squared to the third, so that's going to be c to the sixth power. Okay, now at this point, I'm at the same stop. I'm at the same point that I was up here, right? And they they. This point in this problem looks very similar to this point in this one. Um, not much difference. So <clears throat> what I'm going to do here is the same thing I did up here. Now I have a I have nine over eight. Does nine over eight reduce? Remember, reduce all fractions completely, like this one for example. Well. 9 over 8 doesn't have any common factors. So, no, 9 eighths is 9 eighths. Okay. b to the second to the divided by b to the negative sixth. What do I do here? Same thing I did up here. It's going to be b to what power? 2 minus negative 6. Again, be careful about your negatives. That's going to be times c to what power? 10 minus 6. Let's write that out. So I have 9 eighths. This is b to what power? 2 minus negative 6 is what? A minus a negative is a positive, so I have 2 plus 6, which is b to the eighth power c to the 10 minus 6 power that's c to the well that's c to the fourth power you could write it this way this is perfectly fine and that's the answer um, again dealing with properties of exponents is something you're going to do quite a lot in this class um, especially when algebra um, you will be doing these things a lot. Um, I know this isn't an example, but I do, before I go on in the next section of notes, I do want to do another example. Um, so if you look at this example here, if I had the number 2 raised to the Nine hundred and ninety ninth power divided by two to the one thousandth power. So because these are numbers, you're probably tempted to do this in your calculator. So if I do it in my calculator, all right. So two carat nine nine nine. Uh oh. What is that? It's an error message. Overflow. What does that mean? Got an error message. 
So this, what this is saying is 2 to the 999th power. So this means, this isn't 2 times 999. If I did that, that's, that's this. That's 1998. All right. But 2 to the 999th power is, that's 2 times 2 times 2, 999 times. So your calculator can't do that. The number's too big. When you get an overflow message like that, when you see that, that means the number's too big. When you see overflow, your calculator can't do it. But, so what's the answer here then? I can't do it with my calculator. Oh no, what am I going to do? Well, guess what? Your calculator doesn't know the property of exponents, but you do. How do I do this? How do I write this? This is 2 to the 999th power divided by 2 to the 1000th power. So I could write this as what? 2 to what power? The difference of the powers. Right? So I could write this as 999. To the so it's going to be 2 to the 999th power minus 1000th power and if you do that that's going to be 2 to what power what's 999 minus 1000 that's 2 to the negative first power all right how do I make that positive flip it this is over 1 isn't it so if I bring it down here it becomes 1 over 2 to the first power which is obviously just one half so my point here is that your calculator may not be able to do it but you can your calculator does not know the properties of exponents but you do so that's it for 4.1 on properties of exponents